Welcome to Wisdom Wednesday. You know, we defined commitment uh, because commitment is the theme for the month of February for Wisdom Wednesday. We defined commitment as basically a promise to do or to give something. We talked about how to keep your commitment, to keep your agreement, you know, language, emotion, visualizing the future. That's what eases that up to keep that commitment. And all of this is very valid. And yet there are also valid reasons to break a commitment. Trust. Stephen Covey talks about the emotional bank account. And he says it's a measure of trust in a relationship. You make deposits, the level of trust goes up. We make deposit by keeping our commitments, meeting or exceeding expectations. Withdrawals in the emotional bank account, that reduces the amount of trust in a relationship. And it could be caused by lies, uh, deliberately deceiving, not meeting expectations. So think about partnerships or a divorce because the bank account, the emotional bank account has become overdrawn. So there's no trust left in the relationship. So that could be a reason why you're going to break a commitment because the level of trust has deteriorated to the point that you don't want to be in that commitment, whether it's business or personal. Think about it that way, about breaking the commitment. And sometimes the trust may not be even. Maybe somebody really trusts you, but you don't trust them. It doesn't have to be even. You need to decide if the trust has gotten to a level where you want to break your commitment to whatever it is you had committed to. Um, sometimes that happens with expectations. We make a commitment to a job or whatever it is, and then we find out that that is not what we want to be doing, or we weren't given the whole story. That's happened. I always ask whenever I take something on, is there a pit in here, a background of something that I need to know about? Oh, no, not at all. Hmm. There usually is something that you're not told, sometimes major, sometimes minor. You need to decide if that's a valid reason for you to break that commitment. The second one, so the first one is trust. The second one is energy. You've been to, committed to someone or something and you're full of energy and enthusiasm about it. And now it feels like a burden. It's sucking the life energy right out of you. Again, think of a business partnership, a job, a personal partner. How do you feel energetically? Do you, does it pump you up? Does it give you excitement and energy? And if it no longer does, that could be a reason to break that commitment. And the third reason is tied to energy. This commitment just no longer serves you. You know, you're not getting anything from, from it anymore, and you're not contributing either. You know, for example, sitting on a board of directors or chairing a committee, I've done plenty of both, or having a job. You know, it's time to step aside and let someone else gain that experience. And I'll often say no to board positions just for that. I've done it. I'm not going to gain very much. I've chaired committees. I've chaired board of directors. But other people need the experience of doing that, of running a proper meeting. So the moral of the story is break a commitment the same way as you make a commitment. So with my clients, I teach them to let go of staff members, really, yep, to fire them. Discipline and dismissal is one of the most challenging things that my clients have to face. And if you're employing people, you're going to have to face unemploying them also. You know, you're doing this from a center of love. You don't need to be angry. This isn't a TV show. This is real life. 
And if you come at it from a center of love, you're doing what is best for your company and it's best for them too, even if they don't know it at the time. You know, I fired someone, she came back and said, I was so mad at you that day, but it was the best thing that could have happened to me. And that's often the way it goes. But make sure that you're letting them go with a center of love and make those commitments the same way. If you make your commitments from a place of heart and love, you can uncouple that commitment much easier without all the emotion and the turmoil and the shigan. You may want to put a timeline on your commitment. I will do this for three months. And I did a lot of work in the volunteer sector. And what we discovered was people don't want to commit to being on a committee for four years. Four years is a long time. So you have people commit to smaller blocks of time. Certainly, they also like projects better. Volunteers, paid employees, if you can chunk it down to have a, um, a timeline on it, a clear beginning and a clear end, that's often very helpful to be able to complete the commitment so that people don't feel backed into a corner and then they're breaking their commitment to you and that's not where you want to be. And when my husband and I were married, he made some joke about, okay, let's make a commitment. We're going to be married for 20 years. Let's take 20 years with an option to renew. And when our 20th anniversary came around, we said, okay, we're going to renew for another 20 years. So we just, it was just our way of making it fun. So you could have an option to renew 20 years, option to renew one year, option to renew, whatever you like. Make your commitments from the heart, from a place of love. Wisdom Wednesday. We'll see you soon. Thanks for being with me today.